We are at the Hammurabi headquarters. Mr. Warda, what is your perspective of the human rights situation of the Nineveh Plain, especially after the launch of the liberation operations of the Nineveh Plain and Mosul? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, really, uh, the situation of human rights uh, uh, is terrible in Iraq. Uh, you know, uh, the history of human rights of Iraq is uh, started uh, from zero, you know. Uh, uh, now, uh, the situation is escalated, uh, especially after ISIS invade Mosul and surround an area surrounding Mosul, like Nineveh Plain, Sinjar, and Tal uh, There, uh, ISIL uh, kidnapped, killed, captivated, and uh, looted and uh, displaced the people from the area, tortured people, and uh, all this happened. And, uh, you know, the people left their areas and uh, they were uh, living in very bad situation. The, uh, the situation of human rights is terrible in Iraq. And uh, this is uh, adding uh, more suffering for the people, while this, these areas already were suffered, uh, especially there was no pay attention to that area and already there was a kind of, uh, 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 they were ruled by double, double standard, some uh, administratively they were, they were under the rule of uh, Nineveh government and securely they were in, under uh, the Rule of uh, KRG and Peshmerga and Asaij. Uh, this is this was one of the problem of the area. Uh, there was no development in the area, and the infrastructure were very bad. When ISIS, ISIS entered this area and uh, um, and deport and push the people outside of this area, they damaged everything. Uh, we were visiting this area um, more than uh, maybe 50% of, of houses of the people were uh, destroyed. Uh, some of them were burned and the other were uh, attacked uh, in different ways. Some of them were attacked by airstrike and uh, so the, this uh, the people uh, and this, they are suffering and the situation of human rights is uh, terrible in Iraq still. Dr. John, uh, you've been coming and going to Iraq since 2007. Do you see a change in the human rights situation since the defeat of the Islamic State in the Nineveh Plain? Well, if we're talking about the Nineveh Plain, I've seen an enormous uh, change. First of all, human rights in Iraq, anywhere in Iraq, have never been anchored in the rule of law. Uh, you have secret police, you have arbitrary uh, powers, militias that take the law into their own hands, and sometimes they behave in a more tolerant way, and other times in less tolerant uh, ways, so more destructive and less destructive. But human rights have not really been solidly anchored in the rule of law, but I've noticed a huge change in uh, Nineveh, when I first came uh, to Nineveh in 2007, 2008, 2009, Nineveh was a place of refuge. This was a secure place. It was a place where uh, Christians, in particular from Baghdad and Mosul, who had been uh, persecuted, who had been threatened, who'd had their family members kidnapped and killed, they came back to their ancestral lands and were able by and large to live normal lives. It was a place where people came to for security. Today, there are no humans apart from soldiers, so human rights really uh, are irrelevant in these Nineveh villages because there are no people there. Um, and it remains to be seen whether once people start to return, uh, whether there will be uh, some kind of security for uh, their human rights and whether they will be respected. If human rights are not respected, uh, then it's not likely that many of these displaced human beings will, will return to Nineveh. 
Mr. Ward, uh, recently you have visited the Khazar camp. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the situation there? <clears throat> yes, we visited uh, people displaced. The majority of them, they were uh, from center of Mosul and uh, also from some towns uh, uh, south of Mosul, like Gayara, Shargat, and some neighborhood inside Mosul. Uh, they were suffering really and uh, there was lack of many things like uh, clean water and also there was no electricity and uh, uh, some of them they were they were suffering from some diseases and uh, lack of health uh, care uh, in uh, in the camp uh, also the people they were complain of lack of uh, some blanket and mattresses so uh, their situation there there was still there's a flow of uh, this place every day there was a new this place coming to the uh, camps uh, there uh, the the population in that camp uh, was uh, approximately 30 to 32000 uh, person or people so the, the really the, their situation was not so there, there was many organization especially international organization helping uh, the people in uh, in the camp but the, the, that help is not so enough uh, the role of the uh, central government is very weak in the, that camp and also uh, maybe in, uh, also from here, the local government. Uh, I think uh, the the IDPs in this camp needs uh, more help and uh, uh, more support from the NGOs and from the international organization, also local uh, civil society to help them in the area also. And we expect the number will increase more and more while the, uh, the military uh, operation is continued uh, inside Mosul. Dr. John, uh, the displaced families of the Nunavut Plain often ask for international protection. How do you see such protection taking place? Well, to be honest, I really don't see such protection uh, taking place. Um, I'll start my answer with going back into history at the time when the British were leaving Iraq and an Assyrian delegation went to the British to say, please remain and protect us. And the British said, no, no, there's no need for us to protect you. The League of Nations will protect you. And within months of that uh, promise that the League of Nations would protect the Assyrians, there was a great massacre of Christians. And as we look uh, at the history of uh, international protection, forces. We can't really say that they've done an outstanding job. We can think of uh, the Srebrenica massacre in Bosnia taking place right under the nose of the, the Dutch peacekeepers. Um, I've seen in, uh, in uh, South Sudan uh, that there have been terrible massacres and rape of people right under the noses of international uh, UN uh, forces. So. Um, I don't uh, hold out very much hope that there would be such a force that came, and if it, even if it did come, that it would be terribly effective. The kinds of effective uh, protection, international protection, usually comes when a great power decides to intervene and to provide protection. For example, if the United States had the will to arrange it, the United States could uh, arrange for the protection of people if it had the will. It apparently doesn't have the will. We see in neighboring Syria that Russia does have the will uh, to intervene and is providing protection for uh, the minorities um, in Syria. That's not why they have intervened, but that's a consequence of the Russian uh, intervention that the uh, minorities in, in Syria feel that they have a real uh, protector against the radical Islam, Islamist jihadists um, 
who are threatening their very existence in Syria? The, you know, uh, from my perspective, uh, the protection is something different than intervention. I, uh, uh, I am not with intervention. Uh, I think that protection should come from the, the state itself. The people, uh, the, 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 this is one of the job of the state, of the Iraqi government, should protect uh, its people. This is one, because, uh, you know, uh, when, when uh, the, the state or the government cannot, or is not capable to protect its people, they have right to ask and uh, ask their friend from, of, from the international community to help them for if, they, if they are not capable to protect their people. So this is very logic, very logic if there is if there is will from the government, Iraqi government, if, uh, if, we'll, if we'll see that they have no capability to protect the people in Nineveh plain because of the conflict between the Kurd and Arab Sunni in Mosul and this kind because this is disputes area. So. That's why people, they they scared to come back because still there's political conflict between Baghdad and Erbil on these, over these areas. So uh, in this in this case, in like this cases, the, the government could ask for help from international society for protection. People here, people, minorities, like Yazidis, Christian, they are asking for some grantees when they return, when they would like to return to their areas, would like, because they lost the trust uh, gradually, because what happened to them, they lost the trust uh, and, uh, the, uh, uh, from the KRG and also from Baghdad. So, they need some grantees from the uh, superpowers, but those superpowers, how they will bring the, the, the grantees, it needs some, uh, 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 it needs asking from the government to, to ask, and to, for example, UN and through UN to the other uh, superpower to at least they could uh, find some solution or help Iraqi government to find some solution at, at least to, to, to uh, finalize this problem of uh, disputes area. Uh, otherwise, the people, it is very difficult to them to, to, to return to their area because still their area is uh, 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 under uh, a problem between Baghdad and Erbil. So, uh, I think if there are such guarantees from the superpower that maybe they put pressure on KRG or Baghdad uh, not to or to uh, neutralize this area from the conflict, uh, at least maybe this will encourage people to return. Otherwise, people this is very difficult and because of security and also because this political uh, conflict between Baghdad and Erbil to, over these areas. This is one of the uh, challenges for the minorities, really, uh, uh, and scared to return because uh, who will guarantee for them that what happened to them uh, by ISIS will not repeat again by other groups? Uh, maybe new groups will uh, will appear, and uh, again they will. Uh, committing atrocities again uh, against minorities, especially the non-Muslim minorities like Yazidis and Christian. So uh, I think there's a kind of protection. Uh, the first thing is the protection should come from the the state itself, and the state of this, if, if it's not capable to do that, uh, I think they have right. Is not shame from uh, to the government to ask. From their friend to help them to solu uh, to find a solution uh, for some places or areas that 
not uh, uh, that uh, not capable to control it uh, securely and uh, politically. Dr. John, Mr. Warda, thank you very much.